What are you looking at, dingus? <sighs> From my peripheral and upside down, I was trying to figure out what that was on the box. Because I did not see a toddler in a diaper. What did you think it was? Just looked inappropriate. <laughs> okay, weirdo. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's of Corbin. I'm Rick. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, more juice content. Thanks on Patreon. Follow the account. Ring the bell. Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, and please like this video. Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter. You heard Snoop's new album? Snoop. It's good. It's rip roaring funny in some spots, and if you want to have a good time, follow follow Snoop on Instagram because he's just. He's always on his phone. If you look at his stories, <clears throat> just like he's got, he's just on his phone all the time. He's actually gone live and forgotten, and came back seven hours later and went, "Oh damn, am I still on my live?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> Today we got a uh, informational visa. Why Muga silk is so expensive? The golden silk of India. Oh. Uh, a little informational video. I would like to know why it's so... I was thinking about that just today. Why? I was. Why I was, is Mugo so I was, I was shaving and just pondering about the things in life I do when I'm shaving, and it really occurred to me at that moment, why is Muga silk so expensive? Well, let's find out. This is amazing. The serendipity. To make Muga silk, laborers must unwind a Muga caterpillar's cocoon wow. into a single long seamless thread. Wow. And to make just one sari, about 1,000 cocoons need to be unraveled. Wow. A sari made of muga silk can cost up to $6,500, thousands more than other saris. Dollars? But the That's caterpillars needed to make the cocoons, also called muga seeds, might be in danger of disappearing. And without them, farmers can't produce muga silk at all. So why is muga silk so expensive? And what's hurting the caterpillars needed to make That's it? That's what I want to know. Probably Muga can only be made in the Assam region of India. <laughs> it's so central to the culture here that there's even a traditional song about the golden thread. Muga silk is unique because of its naturally lustrous gold color. It can last up to 100 years and it's said to offer protection by absorbing 85% of harmful UV rays. But these properties also make it more expensive, and the labor and expenses required to make Muga silk bump the price even further. Farmers has to collect the seed cocoons with a very high price from different parts of the Northeast Assam. This is because of the uh, unavailability of Muga seeds, number one. And number two, the huge numbers of manual labor has to be the put in for conducting the rearing, rearing of muga. Kochila putuai, kori pora, kujjo udoy hua pora, kujjo osto jualu ke, teyun ke ek kiki kajjo ni moji to thake. They pick a male and female moth to mate and tie the female to the korika, a stick with a hook made of thatch grass or twine. This is where the female will lay its eggs. Rearers then transfer the korika to a psalm tree, the host plant for muga worms. Here, tiny ash-colored larvae known as chai muga hatch and begin to feed on the leaves. But the larvae are vulnerable at this stage, so farmers need to keep a watchful eye to ensure they can form the cocoons needed to make muga silk. They shoot clay pellets into the fields to keep potential predators at bay and protect the larvae. After one or two months, they can collect the mature caterpillars. And the mature uh, caterpillars are the collected by the farmers at night and they put the mature caterpillars into some zalis for cocooning. Here the caterpillars rest and weave their cocoons for three days until they fully empty the silk glands and enter pupation. Not all cocoons are used for silk, some are stored in the Sakori Para, 
a bamboo box for keeping cocoons and moths so farmers can continue breeding Muga worms. The hatched cocoons are used for rougher fabrics, such as winter clothes and blankets. But the most expensive Muga fabrics come from unhatched cocoons. That's because the silk in these cocoons isn't torn and can be unraveled into a continuous thread. Besides being limited in which cocoons they can use, weavers also need a lot of them. For weavers who buy cocoons, this doesn't come cheap. To produce one kilogram of Muga yarn, Monica needs 5,000 cocoons, which is enough for about five saris. And that one kilogram could take her a week, because to make the yarn, she needs to reel the golden thread, a process that demands special care. Traditionally, the Assamese add dried banana peel or paddy thatch ash to the mixture, which degums the cocoon and gives the thread a better sheen. And when it comes to Muga, the shinier the silk, the more valuable it will be. Two people then use a pangoi to carefully reel the long Muga silk threads in a oh, continuous motion. Crazy. Reelers gently pull from several cocoons and join the thin strings <sighs> together to make one thicker thread. They must make sure each thread has a consistent thickness, or the yarn won't be as valuable. Finally, the rearers load the Muga silk yarn onto bamboo looms, where Assamese women weave it into the desired fabric. Some of the most intricate saris made from regular silk can cost $250 in India, but the same design on a Muga silk fabric can kick the price up into the thousands. <coughs> Muga silk is the pride of Assam, which accounts for almost all of India's Muga silk production, but the profits are limited. <laughs> While Muga farmers work tirelessly to ensure the moths survive, it's not only up to them. The Muga moth is continuously threatened by the climate crisis. Figured. Muga silkworms are reared outdoors, and exposure to even the slightest change in temperature and humidity can wreak havoc. During high temperatures in 2018, farmers had to delay rearing for 10 to 15 days to avoid silkworm deaths. Losing this time during peak commercial season, when production is ramping up, means producers can end up with less Muga silk to sell. This is one of the major threats to the Muga in the coming decades. And second is the, the pollution, and the pollution generated by the tea gardens and petrochemicals. Tea gardens use some uh, very destructive mm. chemicals like uh, pesticides, herbicides, etc, etc. These chemicals have toxic effects on the Muga moth that impact its mortality and ability to reproduce. This can threaten the relatively low production of Muga silk compared to other expensive Indian-made silks like mulberry silk. Only about 239 metric tons of Muga silk were produced in India in 2021. Compare that to over 24,000 metric tons of mulberry silk that were produced in the same year. According to Jatol, this doesn't meet global demand for Muga, and it drives the price even higher. The limited supply of authentic Muga silk has led some producers to fill the gap with fakes. To combat the rise of fake Muga, in 2007, the Indian government designated Assam Muga Silk as a Protected Geographical Indication, or GI product. This means authentic Muga Silk can only come from Assam, but Jatol doesn't believe it's done much to help Assam's Muga Silk production. Because in my calculation, Muga Silkom is in under the extinction deep. All the habitat area, the Muga Silkom, the host plant sector, will be lost, totally lost, in 2046. 
That's why Jatol and other Muga farmers are relying on environmental conservation efforts now and in the future to ensure the survival of this millennia old fabric. I like her a lot. Me too. <laughs> Dang. It's just like all these things we've seen, man. The fact that all this, especially this though, is done by hand in an excruciatingly long process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know how someone one day was like, caterpillar cocoons. Let's make something out right, of it. Right, right. Obviously, I'm an idiot, and I don't, what do you, I don't I know, even I, know how that would... I think about those things all the time, where, like, especially when we watch these videos, it's like, how many trial and error, and who even thought to begin the process to create that thing? And clearly, it's been around for a uh, long, 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 long time. time. Uh, but, yeah, it's no shock that it's the climate change, global warming. That's... Yeah, because even, even if you get... Like, let's say you got laws passed that made the tea manufacturers comply so that they don't pollute the area, right? So let's say you just kept it pristine right now. That doesn't change the fact that the planet's warming and has been for every year for the past many, many years. Yeah. And uh, the only other thing would be so extraordinarily expensive to do, which would be to create, like, greenhouse farms. Yep. The amount of money that would have to be invested into that to create such an atmosphere for them is, I'm sure, cost prohibitive to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They would need outside funding for something like that. And I don't know who would do that. I wonder if the percentage of things, because <clears throat> adaptability is pretty high with animals if the natural habitat is left to its own state. So I'd love them to have the opportunity to just deal with climate change in and of itself and eliminate the pollutants i mean we really would be a better planet just to get rid of pesticides in general regardless of climate yeah. change what a, what a shock it's the humans that are destroying the thing right oh yeah not shocking at all uh we are a virus we need another plague don't say it 